genius. Probably shouldn't say that at the beginning of the video, but that's fine. All right, here we go. So on your focus and your study guide, please fill in the words. Definition for prejudice, which is a negative attitude held by a person about a member of a particular social group. We have all heard this word before, correct? Hello? Yeah, okay, good. Thank you for being alive today. I'm glad you're here. So, prejudice is something we have all dealt with. Whether you've heard of people's prejudice, whether you have your own prejudice, which everyone has prejudices. They do. Everyone has them. <coughs> it's human nature to have them. Okay? So, next part is discrimination, which is treating people differently because of prejudice toward a social group to which they belong. Okay? Every single person has prejudicial thoughts. Not everyone discriminates. Okay? That's where the difference comes in. Now, the easiest way to think of the two, prejudice is what happens in your head. Discrimination is how you, how you behave. That's the difference. Prejudice is in completely in your head. It's your thoughts while you're walking down the street. You see a purple person coming at you, and you're like, oh, my God, a purple person's coming. Oh, my God, oh, my God, be cool, be cool. Just keep looking forward, be cool, okay? Discrimination is when that purple person is coming, and you literally clench your purse closer to you. I mean, like, oh, my God, they're going to steal my purse. Oh, my God, and you, like, stare them down. Like, ah, I know you're a thief, you purple person, okay? Or um, you cross the road. Okay, just to avoid them. That's discrimination. Um, obviously, you have the more aggressive types of discrimination, physical abuse, verbal abuse, all those different types of things um, that fall into it. So prejudice is completely in your head. Every single person has prejudice. They are taught to you by your parents, your family. They are learned by independent situations in which you have gone through. They're reinforced by media or experiences or things people hear in the media. And they are, um, those are how you're going to pick them up in those two major ways. Everyone understands the difference between the two. Prejudice is completely in your thoughts. If you're like, oh my God, there's a purple person in the corner of the room. Oh my God, this is crazy. Prejudice. Okay? Going up to that purple person and saying, why are you here? Like, you don't belong here. Discrimination. Everyone's clear. Because if you don't get this, you're screwed for the whole week. Everyone's good? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so there are forms of prejudice that includes ageism, okay, that old people are useless, young people are awesome. That's ageism. Um, happens a lot in corporate America, actually, where they try to kick out the old people. Why really is corporate America kicking out the old people? Why is corporate America kicking out the old people? Why? Okay, technology, innovation to a degree. What is the real thing? They don't want to have to pay them anymore, okay? If you have a guy or a chick who's been working for your company for 50 years, do you think they have a high salary or a low salary? High salary, absolutely. If you could replace him with two millennials who will cost you half of his price, what are you going to do? Or her price, what are you going to do? Replace, it's called ageism. It's pretty smart. I mean, if you're a corporation, it's a pretty ideal, it's an ideal situation, but um, it's wrong. Uh, sexism. Do I need to explain to you what sexism is? By the way, casually heard it today, this morning. So, McCray woke up with me this morning, and I we had coffee together <laughs> this morning. It was so nice. And uh, we were watching the news. And I was just casually sitting there, and on the Capitol Hill this week, they are t um, doing their Senate hearings for all of Trump's appointees which means Congress gets asked some lots of questions, and then they can either vote to support this appointment or not, and so it's going on. So la yesterday they had the Secretary of State, I believe was his position. He's a former general, so I think he was for the Secretary of State, who was being on the Hill. By the way, he had some amazing quotes. Like, he is, like, totally awesome. Hello. So, um, however, that's not what the news story was about. It was about the blonde chick who is sitting to his, behind him to the left. This is the news story that I'm watching, like a real news broadcast, not like E! News or whatever. It was the blonde chick behind him, and that one of the guys on the show was like, huh, huh, I wonder who got to pat her down. That was at 6.07 this morning. This morning, someone said that on national TV in a, like, 
a major news network. That happened that s this morning. By the way, that's sexism. Casual sexism, because they all giggled, including the really uncomfortable blonde chick. <laughs> sexism. Racism. I think we know that one, yes? Okay. Uh, prejudice towards those who are too thin or too fat. Um, I think this is really one of the last places that we haven't outwardly said you shouldn't do. There's a lot of people make fun of uh, too fat, too thin. There's a whole kind of realm. Okay, so it's one of the last few. But apparently sexism is okay at 6.07 in the morning. It was 6.07 this morning. Can you imagine? By the way, she's like some major reporter and like a really big deal who went to, someone researched it and I saw it later. Um, she went to like, uh, she went to UPenn. She's brilliant. And they're made. It doesn't, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But, like, you've got to be, like, she's not a bimbo. It's not okay. So, here we go. In groups, out groups. This is what today is all about. In groups are social groups with whom a person identifies as us. Okay? You and your friends, the people you hang out with most, is your in group. Okay? Now, especially in high school especially because developmentally, no offense. It's you against everyone else at this school, right? You people, your friends are the only sane people here, right? Only people worthy of your attention. So you guys conquer every single day, every life thing together. That is your in-group. Your out-group is everyone else at the school that you absolutely despise. That's just your developmental age. It's in-group, out-group. Mine's a little bit more inclusive because developmentally, hopefully, I'm beyond you. They struggle at times, okay? So in-group is the us, out-group is the they. If we look outside your lives, there's plenty of examples of in-group, out-group. Right now, we have two groups that people are identifying that is a very hot topic issue. First one is um, Black Lives Matter police. It's an in-group, out-group situation. You have to be on a team. Essentially, correct? Anyone who tries walking down the line, like Hillary Clinton tried walking down the line, correct? Okay, she said she has gone to Black Lives Matter meetings, has had meetings with Black Lives Matter, um, has also verbalized support for the police. Did the police want anything to do with her? No, because she spent more time with the Black Lives Matter. Even though she was saying the right things, Black Lives Matter still has an issue with her. Another example is Trump. Trump has come out swinging always for the police. Okay, then he tried doing some Black Lives Matter stuff. Did it work? No. As a political figure right now, you're either pro Black Lives Matter or you're pro police. You're not allowed any of that vague area. Okay, most people have a stance whether where you kind of fall in that as well. It's in group. It's either Black Lives Matter or in the out groups police or vice versa. Now, using that as an example, realistic conflict theory is the conflict between groups that increase prejudice and discrimination. So a perfect example is Black Lives Matter versus police. Every incident that occurs only makes the position more challenging. Can we agree? Like this morning. What a terrible day for news. This morning, a Florida a state trooper got, um, was jumped, uh, was ambushed, and was getting the crap beating out, beaten out of him um, by someone on the side of a highway. A good Samaritan got out of his car, I think? I'm not even sure. And shot the guy who was pinning down the police officer. So that happened this morning. So a lot of people are celebrating the fact that, you know, this guy's coming to the police aid, which is fine. And a lot of people have already spinning it that this is a racial issue. I don't know, like, you know, wherever you fall on that whole spectrum. Okay? Now, the Mike Brown case the Trayvon Anthony case, all of those other cases. Trayvon, Trayvon Martin. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm so sorry. Um, all of those other cases have pulled people more towards Black Lives Matter or more towards police support. Would you agree? Like, for instance, um, the gentleman who was killed by police in New York. You know, can't breathe, can't breathe. Is it Mike Brown? Uh, Mike Brown's Ferguson. Uh, Garrett, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, 
So a lot of people say that because Eric, no, see you're leading me astray, because Mike Gardner was selling Eric Gardner. Eric Gardner. <laughs> see, now I'm just blending, and I feel so bad. I need to keep them separate. But the, but the sad thing is there's a lot. There's, like, so many, like, I was about to say, like, did you hear about that woman that was killed with the black woman that was killed with the black Yeah. Like two days ago. Two days ago. It was, like, very recently. Like, it was, like, she was, um, transgender, and she was We have to wait and not jump to assumptions. But, like, for instance, a perfect example of in-group, out-group. If you are personally of the opinion that police are abusing their power, when you see a police officer who's driving faster than he should, you're like, oh, my God, another flagrant abuse of power, correct? If you are one person who is more... You know, police are doing fine. It's in fact that these people are criminals. If they were just normal citizens, they wouldn't have been arrested in the first place or had any attention. It's their fault for starting the situation and clearly escalated. You would see that police officer driving fast as in, you know, he's on his way to do good work or something like that. Whatever your opinion is, it's scapegoating for the other side. Can we agree? You're finding issues to maintain your argument because I think as rational adults, we can all understand, whatever your opinion is, that each case that is used for both pro-police or pro-Black Lives Matter is using evidence to support their own case, yes? That you could see the abuse of power and the fact that illegal activity is all happening is at the center of both of these, correct? There are arguments on both sides about both sides, why each side is right, but we get pulled in one way or the other, and that's scapegoating. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to show you a video clip, and we're going to stop and talk about it, of course, as we're going. Um, this is a very, very, very famous experiment. It's probably one of the more popular uh, experiments in pop culture. This was originally done in the 1960s. You'll know by the outfits. Mm-hmm. You will know by the outfits. The other thing is that I do want to point out before I show you the video is that the language we used in the 1960s is totally different from the language we use here in 2017. Correct? So, as AP Psych students, I get to show you things that may you wouldn't be able to see in other classrooms. So please take it serious. The content in here is fascinating. The children are adorable. And they say the craziest things and how quickly it flips. So what I want you to be paying attention as we kind of go through, in-group, out-group, conflict. All right. My other classes really enjoyed this today. So this is original footage, which is awesome. This is the original experiment. This experiment has been covered so many times. Um, the children that you see in this video, uh, most recently were interviewed again in 2010 or 2011 about this experiment in the 1960s. Like, this is a big deal that speaks volumes on a lot of the issues that clearly we're struggling with here in 2017. Um, so, all right, this is a special week. Does anybody know what it is? National, National Brotherhood. Brotherhood. National Brotherhood Week. What's brotherhood? Be kind to your brothers. Be, be kind okay, to your be kind brothers. to your brothers. Like you would like to be treated. Treat everyone the way you would like to be treated. Treat everyone as though he was your brother. brother. And is there anyone in this United States that we do not treat as our brothers? Yes. Who? Yes. The, black yes. people. the black people. Who else? In Absolutely, the Indians. And when you see, when many people see a black person or a yellow person or a red person, what do they think? Oh, look at that. Dumb people. And look at the dumb people. What else do they think sometimes? What kinds of things do they say about black people? Oh, they niggers. Niggers. In a city, many places in the United States. How are black people treated? How are Indians treated? How are people who are of a different color than we are like treated? They, like they are part of this place. world. They don't get anything in this world. Like Why is that? Because they're a different color. You think you know how that would feel yeah. to be judged by the color of your skin? Yeah. I don't, do you think you do? Mm. No, I don't think you would know how that felt unless you had been through it, would you? <laughs> It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? Yeah. Sounds like fun.
fun, doesn't it? Since I'm the teacher and I have blue eyes, I think maybe the blue-eyed people should be on top the first day. I mean, the blue-eyed people are the better people in this room. Oh, yes, they are. Blue-eyed people are smarter than brown-eyed people. My dad isn't that stupid. Is your dad brown-eyed? Yeah. One day you came to school and you told us that he kicked you. He did. Do you think a blue-eyed father would kick his son? Yeah. My dad is blue-eyed. Blue he never kicked me. Me. Greg's dad is blue-eyed. He's never kicked him. Rex's dad is blue-eyed. He's never kicked him. Okay, what is the experiment? First of all, did these kids know what prejudices are immediately? Are they, are they aware enough? that people are not treated equal in the United States in the 1960s. Yeah, you'll notice these kids are all what? White. White, by the way. It's going to come in here in a little bit. All right, what is the foundation of the experiment? Oh, my God. Okay, so what is she basing the discrimination on? On eye color. This is a this is a fact. Blue-eyed people are better than brown-eyed people. Are you brown-eyed or blue-eyed? No. Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> are you sure that you're right? Why? What makes you so sure that you're right? I don't know. The blue-eyed people get five extra minutes of recess, while the brown-eyed people have to stay in. The brown-eyed people do not get to use the drinking fountain. You'll have to use the paper cups. You brown-eyed people are not to play with the blue-eyed people on the playground, because you are not as good as blue-eyed people. Well, the brown-eyed people in this room today are going to wear collars so that we can tell from a distance what color your eyes are. On page 127? 127. Is everyone ready? Everyone but Laurie. Ready, Laurie? Brown -eyed. She's a brown-eyed. You'll begin to notice today that we spend a great deal of time waiting for brown-eyed people. Why is she saying mean things to brown-eyed people? Okay, because we're trying to build the ego of the blue-eyed people, correct? If they are the in-group, then they have to feel like there's a group lower than them. Okay, it's just like when you make fun of someone in, uh, in the out-group of your friendship, okay, of your friends in the out-group. When you say mean things about them, are you thinking of them as a human who has feelings, or are you just saying whatever you want? You're saying whatever you want, and I am a victim of this too because we're all in in-groups, out-groups, correct? It's social behavior. So when you say something mean, it's really funny to your friends. Are you thinking of them as individuals? Or are you thinking of them as, well, they don't really matter. They don't really matter. And that's what she's trying to do. If there's not that kind of banter back and forth, well, I'm superior and putting down, is it really an in-group, out-group thing? No, because naturally we put people down that we don't like or that we see as not as competition or something like that. The yardstick's gone. Well, okay. I don't see the yardstick, do you? It's probably over there. Hey, Mrs. Egg, you better keep that on your desk so if the um, brown people, brown eyed people get out of hand. What did my man just say? By the way, this is 15 minutes into this experiment. What did my man just say? Anyone hear it? What did he say, Valeria? In 15 minutes, they have blue-eyed people, the in-group, has already threatened violence on the out-group. 15 minutes. Was there a difference between the two before this whole thing started? Within 15 minutes, there's already threats of violence. Oh. You think if the brown-eyed people get out of hand, that would be the thing to use? Who goes first to lunch? So if 
you have a collar on, you're in the out group. I just want to make sure. Blue-eyed people. No brown-eyed people go back for seconds. Blue-eyed people may go back for seconds. Brown-eyed people not do not. not. Brown -eyed. Don't you know? Ooh, they're not smart. Is that the other reason? Okay. Might take too much. They're not smart. They may take too much. They're greedy. <laughs> Huh? Are they continuing like the blue This is all one day. This is Tuesday morning. Oh, okay. This is all one day. Because she said, um, just for today, we'll have the like blue Tomorrow it'll reverse. Okay. We were down on the bottom. Everything bad was happening to us. The way they treated you, you felt like you didn't even want to try to do anything. See, like this is how it was taking our best friends away from us. What happened? To Just said. personally, this is like one of my favorite moments of the entire AP Psych course. Of, I'm so glad I get to see it three times today. By the way, if I was ever going to have a child, I hope it's this kid. Now, by the way, he's like 70, but that's fine. <laughs> Booby boys fighting. Yeah. yeah. Jack. Russell and John. Russell. What happened, John? Russell called me names and I hit him. Hit him in the gut. What did he call you? My heart warms. Brown eyes. Did you call him brown eyes? They always call us that. You yeah. want to get all of the um, yeah. blue eyes called us that. call us brown eyes. He says, come here, friend. So what happened at lunch? What happened at lunch? They jeered. They jeered. Oh my god. Oh yeah. No. What did that happen at lunch, Mia? Hit him in the gut. You got to give the pause, man. It's what the whole. I hit him. Gut. Okay. Why did he hit him in the gut, Mia? Called him brown eyes. Would that insult have worked the day before? No. Now, immediately, that insult will trigger a physical response of aggression. Started Tuesday morning, and this is Tuesday at lunch, by the way. I want to call us blue eyes. I wasn't yeah. saying I needed dime work. Yeah. What's wrong with being called brown eyes? It means that we're stupid and we're well, not that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. just the same yeah. way as other people call uh, black people niggers. Yeah. Is that the reason you hit him, John? Did it help? Did it stop him? Did it make you feel better inside? Stop for us. Make you feel better inside? Did it make you feel better to call him brown eyes? Why do you suppose you call him brown eyes? Right, because he has brown eyes. Is that the only reason he didn't call him brown eyes yesterday and he had brown eyes yesterday? Didn't he? Because we get snow. Yeah, yeah, I understand you put those blue fringes on there. Tease them. Okay, tease them. Oh, is this teasing? No. Well, he did it. Were you doing it for fun, to be funny, or were you doing it to be mean? I don't know. Don't ask me. Did anyone laugh at you when you did? I watched what had been marvelous, cooperative, wonderful, thoughtful children turn into nasty, vicious, discriminating little third graders in a space of 15 minutes. Yesterday, I told you that okay, brown-eyed so people day. aren't as good as blue-eyed people. That wasn't true. I lied to you yesterday. <laughs> the truth is that brown-eyed people are better than blue-eyed people. <laughs> Russell, where are your glasses? I forgot them. You forgot them. And what color are your eyes? Blue. <laughs> Susan Ginder has brown eyes. She didn't forget her glasses. Yeah. Russell Ring has blue eyes and what about his glasses? He forgot them. He forgot them. 
Yesterday we were visiting and Greg said, boy, I like to hit my little sister as hard as I can. That's fun. <laughs> what does that tell you about blue-eyed people? They fight a lot. The brown-eyed people may take off their collars. And each of you may put your collar on a blue-eyed person. The brown-eyed people get five extra minutes of recess. You blue-eyed people are not allowed to be on playground equipment at any time. You blue-eyed people are not to play with the brown-eyed people. Brown-eyed people are better than blue-eyed people. They're smarter than blue-eyed people. And if you don't believe it, look at Brian. Do blue-eyed people know how to sit in a chair? Very sad. Very, very sad. Who can tell me what contraction should be in the first sentence? Go to the board and write it, John. Come on, let's do it again. Loosen up. Up, up, up. Come on. That's better now. Do you know how to make a W? Okay, write the contraction for we are. Now that's beautiful writing. Is that better? Yes. Brown-eyed people learn fast, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Boy, do the brown-eyed people learn fast. Very good. Greg, what did you do with that cup? Will you please go and get that cup and put your name on it and keep it at your desk? Blue-eyed people are wasteful. Okay, want to be time this morning? Yeah. A. I use Orton Gilliam phonics. We use the card pack. And the children, the brown-eyed children, were in the low class the first day. And it took them five and a half minutes to get through the card pack. The second day, it took them two and a half minutes. The only thing that had changed was the fact that now they were superior people. You went faster than I've ever had anyone go through the card pack. Over the why, why couldn't you get them yesterday? They had the collars on. You think the collars kept you? just keep thinking about the collars. Oh, and you couldn't think as well with the collars on. What did we just hear? It just happened. What just happened? What do you got, Chris? So basically, the day before, they were being discriminated against because they were brown eyes, and it like, took longer than for them to, uh, like, did they do a sign or whatever they were doing? It took them longer. And then the next day, it took them So, from being in the in group, from the out group to the in group, significantly affected their academic performance. From just one day of being discriminated in the out group to being the center of attention in the in group affects their academic performance. And they said it was because their eyes were rolling around in their head and because their collars. To a degree, to a degree, not quite. Because it's going to be an event after Four event. minutes and 18 seconds. I know we weren't going to make it. How long did it take you yesterday? Three minutes. Three minutes. How long did it take you today? Four, four, four minutes and 18 seconds. seconds. What happened? One down. Why? What are you thinking of? This. I hate today. How do you do? I hate too. <laughs> because I'm blue eye. See, I am too. Mm -hmm. It's nothing, it's not funny, it's not fun, it's not pleasant. This is a filthy, nasty word called discrimination. We're treating people a certain way because they are different from the rest of us. Is that fair? No. no. Nothing fair about it. We didn't say this was going to be a fair day, did we? No. And it isn't. It's a horrid day. Okay, you ready? What did you blue 
people who are wearing blue collars now? Find out today. Oh, yes, no. I know what they felt like t In yesterday. The, I did it too. How did they feel yesterday? Down. Like a dog on a leash. Yeah. It feels like, like a chain them up wherever you go. In the prison. Like you're chaining them up in the prison. So, what is she trying to teach by this? How other people feel in news. Yeah. Every day. Absolutely. She's teaching it to a bunch of white people who've never had real discrimination against them. Now think about it, okay? I am a white female, blonde hair. I have experienced sexism. I'm sitting on my couch this morning. I experienced sexism. Um, but I've never faced real discrimination uh, because of how I look, which, I, you know, I, I'm lucky, I guess. But, I mean, I wouldn't put those kind of terms on it. What she's doing here is, first of all, discrimination is top. Can we agree? You learn from it, okay? The other component of it is, if we're looking at these kids who went from one day being in power from the in-group, who are in the out-group, and the out-group now becomes the in-group, what do you think our minorities feel? When we have discriminated groups, our Latinos, our Hispan our Latinos, our African American, our Asian American, all of our different cultures that are not in the in group. How do you think they feel? So when you look at it, you're both being affected with your self esteem, correct? The brown eyes, blue eyes, it was self esteem. Well, we're stupid, you know? It's self esteem, it's connectedness to your peers. And it's academic performance. So in one day, did it have a, t a drastic effect? Yeah. Imagine what it would be like growing up in a situation where you're being discriminated against. Where there's open discrimination. Is it a simple thing or is it all-encompassing? All-encompassing. So think about all the different components of society and what you think of when you think of prejudices, when you think of different cultures and all these different other components. Is it more dynamic or less dynamic seeing it this way? Because when we talk about different ethnicities and how well they perform in schools, when we talk about different ethnicities and how they live, culture, interactions, marriage rates, death rates, obesity, um, when we talk about every single ethnicity gets pulled through all these things, and there's certain things that we harp upon on that. How much of it is taught? How much is it comes from the discrimination that they face? Think about it. Now, I'm not saying white people have it a perfect life, because that's not the case at all. However, how much does discrimination play a role in your own self, your own academic performance, and your own interaction with others? And that's the, that's the shocking thing that came out of this experiment, is within one day, we have threats of violence within 15 minutes, we have violence before lunch, we have violence at lunch. So imagine what it would be like if you haven't experienced it, what it could be like. I can't speak on any of that because I haven't, but I think it's a really interesting to think about. Would you be able to carry on and just be like, yes, I'm here, yes, moving forward, and keep all three of those components completely intact? Or would it bear down on you? So, I'm going to age my girl Jane 30 or 40 years. You ready to see her? No? You don't want to see her? Jane's the teacher. Put that another way. Is it important to you that you're male? Yes. Yeah, see? Aged her real quick. Yeah, it's Jane. Jane Elliott is the name of the teacher. So I'm going to kind of jump around. So obviously she does that with third graders. Okay? So she does that with third graders. And I think we can all agree that that is um, a pretty shocking experiment, correct? that third graders could escalate to threats of violence with 15 minutes and actual straight up violence during lunchtime and how quickly they turn on each other and how their academic performances were shifted. So after she did this, after it played on TV, her life totally changed. So apparently she goes around to college campuses and she hosts the same event. She, makes all, uh, she puts all the white people in the middle and she separates them out in order to teach um, what discrimination is and how to kind of deal with it. All right, so I'm going to skip around a lot. This whole thing is so fascinating. She's so good. She's so good. So I'm going to skip around a little bit because I need to get to the points I have. All right, but isn't it weird seeing her as old Jane? Like, you literally just met young Jane. 
Now you're meaning old Jane. Real open body posture, don't you, darling? I guess so. So you can learn, can't you? No. So collars, are they in the in-group or the out-group? Out-group. Getting right along. Your hand is still up. You still didn't learn anything, did you? Didn't I just say when your hand is up, you are thinking of what you're going to say instead of what's being said? Didn't I just say that? Yes, you did. And did you hear that? Yes, I did. And did you decide that you were just going to do it your way? I was... Wait a minute. You want to roll Yes, there, I did. Yeah, thank you very yes, much. Yes, I now, did. Now, since you choose to not listen to others... What do you suppose we're going to do where you're concerned? Not listen to me. Thank you very much. Now, now, no, because you're still thinking what you're going to say instead of what I'm saying. Now, getting right along. I heard what you Whatever, were saying. You're doing I it again. What you were you're saying. doing it again. I don't care. You're doing it again. It's wrong. You're you doing it again. Persecuted her for standing you're out. You're doing it again. Persecuted him for standing out. The only change that ever happens is when people stand out and I am so back down. Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. Are you in any physical danger here? Are you in any physical danger here? Is that girl in any physical danger here? Emmett Till was hanged by his neck after he was beaten almost to death simply because he said made a statement to a white woman. Does he have <laughs> Every time I do the exercise, there is a point at, at which I know I have made the point. And we could stop there, but you have to nail it down. And so it goes on longer than some people think it should, but you have to nail it down. People at this institution... Yeah, thank you very much. What is my point that I've made? But I, you can't make generalizations about any place because there's racism everywhere. That's right. And while it may be... Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. 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 You don't come back in here until you've apologized to every person in this room. Because you just exercised a freedom that none of these people of color have. When these people of color get tired of, ra of racism, they can't just walk out because there's no place in this country where they aren't going to be exposed to racism. They can't even stay in their own homes and not be exposed to racism if they turn on the television. But you, as a white female, when you get tired of being judged and treated unfairly on the basis of your eye color, you can walk out that door. And you know it won't happen out there. You exercise the freedom they don't have. If you're going to be in here, you're going to apologize to every black person in this room. And do it now. I'm and sorry. my Latinos. Every there person of color. Racism, this country. Bullshit. No, you're not going to say I'm sorry there's racism. You're going to apologize for what you just did. I will not apologize because it is Out. not a matter of Out. race always. Out. Out. Now, is she choosing to leave? Yes. yes. She could apologize and stay. I won't play um, the wrong game anymore. It's not going to hurt us to apologize. Yeah, let's talk about that. Going on in this room alone. When she leaves, that's it. It's over. Okay. I'm the it ain't gonna hurt her. Is it gonna hurt her? She according to action, and it's killing. It's killing her. Yeah, it's killing her. But these people, they felt like it was somewhat traumatic, and I'm thinking, how is this so traumatic when they weren't cursed? Nobody was throwing anything at them. They weren't hit. If they were just getting upset over. Me minor stuff that happens to us on that happens to us every day but they don't realize it one of our students left because she had the right to make the choice whether to stay or go students of color do not have the right to make the choice her walking out showed frustration not only of her as a white person but of many people of color and i kind of think that 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 if somebody didn't walk out that it really wouldn't articulate what we want to do every day. We all want to walk out. We all want to get away from the problem, but we can't. You think she's learning anything in the hall? Probably not. Probably not. Did she choose then not to learn? Yes. Yes, because the learning situation is not one in which she feels comfortable or in which she feels secure. So what does she do? Leaves. Things are better than they were when I was...
All right. It's experiences with judgment and prejudice, etc., were being invalidated. Stand up. You stand up. Stand right here. You stand right here. Now, you folks see any differences here? <laughs> do you see any differences here? The perfectly yes. logical question, do you? Yes. What's the first one you notice? What? Sex. Sex. Is sex important to you? Let me put that another way. <laughs> Let me put that another way. Is it important to you that you're male? Yes. Yes. Why? I uh, feel so strong, powerful. Your gender is important to you. Yes. Do you want to be seen as a male? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Has anybody ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you, male? <laughs> no. Has anybody ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you, black? Yes. Yes. How many of you see Rasu as black? <laughs> Did you know you were black before they said so? <laughs> is your color important to you? Very important. And your height is important to you? Yes. And why is your color important to you? It is who I am. It is who you are. Is it important for you? That she sees you as you are, not as just like everybody else. Yes. Yes. When you say to a person of color, when I see you, I don't see you black, I just see everybody the same. People, think about that. You don't have the right to say to a person, I do not see you as you are. I want to see you as I would be more comfortable seeing you. I uh, wanted to make it clear to the class that the first thing we do see is black and white. Maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad, but it's something that we have to come to and say and agree and just be open with it, like, yes, he's black, I see it. Rasul came away with a knowledge of how the power system works. And that's extremely important. And I think with the knowledge that it isn't his imagination. We live in different realities, but when you deny what this person is going through, or what this person is going through, you're denying their reality. We are as different on the inside as we are on the outside, and we have the right to be so. People. Okay. So, I don't know if what you guys grew up in, I was always raised in, everyone's equal. Everyone's the same. Treat everyone equally. See everyone as equally. And, I mean, with this and other things, it really has made me think of, yeah, I, I'm Sam Bennett, blonde hair, blue eyes, pasty white right now, pasty white. Look like I haven't seen the sun, actually in quite some time. But this is who I am. I don't want you to see me in any other way because this is me. I'm quirky. I don't know if you've noticed that. Have you noticed that I'm quirky? A little? Ah. All right. <laughs> but when we're talking about races, when we're talking about ethnicities, when we're talking about all different types, it's about seeing people for who they are and accepting it. And it's about understanding that, yes, there's white people. Yes, there's Latinos. Yes, there are blacks. Yes, there are Asians. Yes, there are every other different layer in between all those things. But it's about understanding where people are kind of coming from and seeing them from where they are and not for what you like. And that's the biggest foundation that you can come to when you're coming against discrimination and prejudice is just kind of accepting. Uh, there's nothing you can do. In your head, you're always going to have prejudice. Okay, so Miss Smith beat me up about two years ago after school. It was violent, very violent. Um, so every time I see Miss Smith, I flinch a little bit. And in my head, I'm like, oh my God, is she going to beat me up today? Is today the day she comes back for round two? Okay, that's prejudice. I hate Miss Smith now because of her uh, beating me up in the back of the school. But because of that, I'm always going to have that impact. Prejudice, you can't escape. Discrimination, you can. Sounds good? So think about it, please. All right, so how do we stop prejudice? Social cognitive theory is the, one of the most effective ways in order to do that. So social cognitive theory views prejudice as an attitude acquired through direct instruction. That you had to learn it somewhere. Your fears of other people or your opinions on other people are going to come from somewhere. Typically, you learn it from your parents. Okay? So, when um, people who hate purple people, someone had to teach them to hate purple people. Okay? Little kids, when they come out of the womb, babies come out of the womb, I believe the expression I used so eloquently was fall out of the womb when I was teaching you uh, 
birth, wasn't it? Didn't I say fall out of the womb? Anyway, um, no one, little kids don't have prejudice until someone teaches them to fear other people. Okay, so social cognitive theory sees it as modeling and stuff like that. One other major theory that we're trying to use in order to deal with prejudice is social identity theory. It's a theory in which the formation of a person's identity within a particular social group is explained by social categorization, social identity, and social comparison. What that means is, is that when we look at people, we have to look at individuals and how every single component comes together. Make a unique picture. Because if you look at all the white people, are all white people the same? Yeah. No, absolutely not. We have very bright white people. We have very moronic white people. We have inclusive white people. We have people who hate everyone. We have um, kind. We have mean. We have murderers. We have rapists. We have, you know, heroes and doctors and just like every other spectrum. But we can't understand people until we know that person. And so making broad generalizations about a certain group is what is causing the fraction. So individualization of our knowledge. So when we deal with it, we're dealing with social identity. And what is social identity? Is this on there too? I'm killing it, by the way. I'm killing it. Filling in that focus like a boss. Um, is a part of the self-concept including one's view of a self as a member of a particular social category. So your social identity is how you fall. Now, one of, um, my, uh, one of McCray's good friends is from Jamaica, who's white, okay, because it's a colony, they're British of descent. Uh, we'll talk about it on Monday. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Tuesday. Tuesday. Just kidding. <laughs>